Okay, uh, <coughs> Fagan and Packer, Introduction to Complete Development Environment. First of all, footnote, it is an, only an introduction. I should have replied it, getting started guy, because... Um, so if I see you walk out, you're hoping for something different. I understand. Now, does this work? As I said, just put that in there for advertising that event. Now, why am I standing here? <laughs> I sent out this uh, Twitter sometime in January looking for speakers. Thousands of people replied, <laughs> not. <laughs> I thought, oh, what are you doing? We had a speaker of February, I was thinking, hey, yeah. I need to add your feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's put in a, a stop gap. So that's the reason why I'm here. So no throwing tomatoes at me. So, I had to have a think. What shall I, what shall I do? I had a good, good think. And um, yes, before you say it, yes it did hurt. Now, I had two things in my mind. I learned to do, I want to do clustering. And I don't want to buy this, these old Solaris cluster product, and I would like to cluster my Solaris systems and zones. Um, I haven't seen anything out there which doesn't advertise, and maybe something out there if you people know something. I thought, okay, look, look at the, uh, the, the, the HA product, which says it's supposed to support it. Um, but um, get a compound Solaris, I said more chance of winning the lottery, mm -hmm. and even that's out of date. Um, I had a play with it, and people, you know, you, see, you, know, you, you search Google and say, yes, I got it to work in Solaris 10, but do they ever tell you how they get it to work? No, they don't. And Solaris 11, non-star, <coughs> yeah, get that. That's something which I'm really interested in. I, I want to find out if anyone's actually s clustering Solaris, Solaris zones without using the Oracle products. Someone must be doing it. Or Good future talk if someone's actually doing it. So, on Twitter, I came across this one Vagrant with Slash 11. Okay, I'm interested in Slash 11. What's Vagrant? <coughs> I've got a clue. Follow the link and eventually found out what it's all about. So, before I actually start talking about, what's the problem which Vagrant and these tools are trying to fix? Is there a problem? They create something, something called vagrants out there, but what's it trying to do? Um, two pieces of software. Actually, the, I've got them the other way around because I've mentioned this in a second. Packer is a vagrant tool, and vagrant second. I'll put the URL there. Um, I don't know what dot .io, .io, what country is that? Because um, I've never actually looked that up. So I'm going to touch on Packer, demo, Touch on Vagrant demo. Short and sweet. Hopefully not that short, but we'll see. Okay, the problem. Go back a bit when you had a new developer, or, you know, and I work at Berkeley University, and um, the guys, the desktop guys, you know, they set up a desktop, and a new person comes along, or a new lab, and it's different. The problem is usually, uh, Days could go by, someone's struggling to get this piece of software working, or they got it working, and suddenly it doesn't com you know, compatible with the other people in the development. Why is that? And you suddenly realize <coughs> you've given the, the developer of the new desktop has the wrong software on it, different versions, stuff like that, or something slightly different. And you know, this is not very good. Missing, say, missing software, so the developer you know, or the user takes a long time getting up to speed. You know, oh, this software, download this piece of software, they honestly piece of software, and like two weeks go by, he can actually start his job, start the project he's going on. Now, that's hard enough with just desktop, physical desktops. Problem is, cloud computing, virtualization came around. It made life very easy, and everyone said, ooh, let's, I can start up another, another operating system, another operating system, another thing like that. It, it was love great. You know, your boss will come around and say, oh, can we have this? Yes, I can do that. You, start, you, you install no operating system somewhere out there. Yes, uh, install some software and it, great. 
Virtualization, cloud computing is absolutely brilliant. It allows you to uh, set up millions, depending on your hardware, or your cloud, or lots of operating systems, and you don't care where they are, they're on the machine, you don't care. And it's easy. But the problem is, how do you look after them? So in a sense, oh, the basic one, you have VM out there, everyone uses VM for ages. <coughs> then, VirtualBox is another favorite for desktop people and stuff like that, and developers, but I think VirtualBox is very popular for developing software and stuff like that. Amazon, and a lot more. You have all these different things, so what do you do? So you come along, you've got your operating system development environment, and say, okay, you set it up to, you know, you set it up for your local developers, you install it in one virtual box, fine, you store it for another person, fine. Then you've got it, you've got it working now for the virtual box, and you say, oh, we want to, this software, we want to send it over to VM people. Oh, so you've got another set up and some more developing fans on the VM system. Yeah. Do I start from scratch again? Install it on the VM, make sure, or you know, do can I convert the disk image and stuff like that? And then the course goes on, you know. They went in Amazon now. And they went everywhere. How do you do this? Yes, small organization, stuff like that, you must do it manually. You may get an image and then you try to tweak it for this one, tweak it for that one. Um, you get by. So <clears throat> problem. You could say not really a problem if you're 100% slash environment. I'm, a, I'm well, I look after the back, so I am 100% slash. Uh, and if you do it correctly, user zones and you use a automated installer, it is you don't need any more tools. You just fire off the zone, fire it, and it will install software as long as you're following all the rules of Article uh, Auto Installer. You've got every software in your IPS package system. Um, you can have a new system up and running with no user input at all. Again, saying that as what I say and what I do, I do different things. Again, when I set up a new zone, I have to log on and set up Active Directory manually. I should script it and stuff like that. So even Slavis is not uh, immune to this. So you, need a, so you need tools which will take this and do this automatically and deploy these images, deploy these environments, and of course, the less user steps, the less errors. So even with sense, a slash environment, I end up doing manually and you make errors. So how do you avoid the, er the errors and take over? Here comes Vagrant, um, taken from their website. Develop an environment made easy. Create and configure lightweight, reproducible, and portable development environments. Um, in reality, the, what they've done okay, is actually, you could say they haven't actually done anything vagrant. They've got every, everything's out there already, and they've packaged it. it comes out in more detail. So in reality, vagrant haven't actually developed anything. It's a bit unfair because they've done a lot and stuff like that. But there's all the tools already out there, you know, um, and they just put, try to put it into one little black box to do this thing. Packer on their website is a tool for creating identical machine images for multiple platforms from a single source configuration. I said, uh, whenever I decided to do this talk, I looked into it. I, I actually I thought Packer was much more useful for me um, because, you know, in a situation, okay, I use VirtualBox, but we don't, we don't have any cloud, we don't use Amazon, we don't use VMware and stuff, those things. Uh, but I like the idea of Packer, you know, creating an image from a source configuration file. But again, is there any manual inputs and stuff like that? No. Okay. Aut I say, automated creation of machine images, that's what it says. Braces modern configuration management tools, so it uses scripts. I'll get back to what it actually does in a second. So it, it tries to do everything by hand. Useful developers, as we said. You know, you've got a developer project, uh, you can just uh, send an image, have an automatic image created, and the developer can use that straight away. System admin is perfect. You know, if you do, uh, if you use environments VMware, you can just create an image and send it off to all the uh, 
servers, desktops, whatever, very easily. And so since it's from the same configuration file, they will all be identical. So automate the whole process, no errors. That's just creating the image. <coughs> How does it do this? It actually sp splits, building a, a pa using packet, it splits the uh, user configurations is three, three distinct areas. Well, first of all, the builder. <coughs> okay, first of all, what is the configuration part? First of all, it supports many image formats. As you can see, uh, using the software, you can create Amazon image, digital o ocean, all, all the, every cloud that's out there, it, it does them all. Docker, I don't even know Docker, Google, fine. OpenStack, Zen stuff, VirtualBox, VMware, and if it's missing some, there's options, you use it, the language, they have customs up there, so you can actually create custom images. If you have your own system or they've missed something, something comes along, they have the ability to custom and create your own images. Many operating systems, it can cre create, it only runs on a few operating systems, it runs on Windows, a few versions of Linux uh, and Mac. Uh, but it will create images of many operating systems. <coughs> Most Linux systems, even Windows, um, I didn't have to try it, but it was on there. People do use it to create Windows images and stuff like that. Uh, and it takes your configuration file and it also specifies the only thing where you need it this time, besides the disk, the software to be installed, configuration, usernames. It does all this. Because then you just want the image. So in a sense, you're not deploying it yet. You want to, what, you, what you want to deploy, you, want, you need your starting point. Um, Okay, and the provisioners is the other part. The, the next two, it's optional. Again, it allows you to install and configure software, some extra part. Um, you'll see why it's separate in a second. So in a sense, you can install some extra software uh, just before the machine's turned off. Um, I think the idea of the builder is where you in, install the operating system, and the provisioner is where you install the software. They try and keep it separate. And it uses you know, shell scripting, you can file uploads to the, the new image, and it uses the, um, the uh, Chef, Puppet, Salt, and a lot more. So in a sense, it uses all these standard management tools. It uses these, so in a sense, it's not invented anything here. This is a packer thing, but it's using standard, well-known products to actually help you create this image. And finally, the post-processor, so you've got this image now on the disk, uh, this is again optional, what you may want to do with it, you want to compress the image, try to compress the image to the smallest size so you can transfer it to a different location. Some VM specific operations, um, you know, for VMware and Amazon, it has some options to do that. Um, to change the format, um, so when you've created created this, you say, oh, you said I'm creating this image for VirtualBox, it'll have a specific format at the end. Uh, you can actually change a format, so you can convert it to a different format, to a general format or to a specific type. Uh, for VirtualBox, it, uh, it converts it to the box format, uh, which the VirtualBox uses. So in a sense, you, at this time, you have the image on disk, but you can convert this, this image to a format which cloud operating systems understands. So now I'll show you a configuration file of this. Maybe actually before I said do anyone use de deployment tools to deploy their systems here? Does anyone use Vagrant? And people use Puppet, Chef, whatever. Yeah. MDT. Yeah, fine. Okay, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Fine. So I mean, so in a sense, you're happy with that and stuff like that. But I don't know. Is there a lot of work to it? Or is it again, you just night the script. You do it easily. I guess you you can say yes. You've got it done as a fine art. Now the builder. What does actually the configuration file looks like? It says, can it do all this? Boot command. I'll come back to you in a second. Uh, quite very basic commands. Boot wait. Um, in a sense, when you start this, I'll demonstrate in a second. 
Uh, don't do anything for 